Hey, this is Paul Stewart, and welcome to Show Us Your Cave. Today's guest is performer, electronic musician, composer, songwriter, graphic artist, Scott Hansen, a.k.a. Tycho. We're going to check in with Tycho in his new creative space that brings an ease of workflow to his process. Let's check it in. Hey, Tycho, nice to meet you. Yeah, Tycho. thanks for having me. Appreciate it. We're going to talk about your room, which is new to you. Yeah, yeah, pretty new. I mean... This, this wall is all modular, so this was in the old space, but yeah, I'm in a completely new um, physical location, geographic location too. I moved <laughs> across the bay from uh, San Francisco to Oakland. All right, well, um, and you've got a lot of your gear parked right around you. Is this your work zone, right? So you turn around and this is where everything you need is at your disposal, at least as far as I can see from the electronic side, from the keyboard side. Yeah, that's the idea is that it's kind of like, I saw this picture of Vince Clark's studio back from the uh, the 80s, um, the late 80s, I think, early 90s. But um, he had like this octagon <laughs> type configuration. He was in this like silo thing. And uh, and I just was always like, oh, that's cool. Like just everything's at arm's reach. And uh, so that's always been like the continual struggle is to find a way to like, where does everything go to keep it ergonomic? And then, you know, like you can't, uh, you have to think about the, the monitoring situation and somehow, you know, you have these rules about where the monitors have to be and where the, the, the panels and the insulation have to be. So like working around all that and making it also functional as a writing space and like a mix mastering space has been, uh, that's always been the challenge. But you do it all right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the beauty is, is uh, so Count designed these, the, the mix engineer that I work with, uh, mix and mastering. And, uh, and, you know, like I would take my computer over his place. Cause like, I like the mix process to be kind of, um, you know, like I like him to like work on the track, but then I can take it back with the full session. I, I work in this program called in Reaper. Mm -hmm. So like it, he, he now can, can get around in it. So we're able to trade projects online, but before I'd have to take all my stuff over. So I'd have to take it to his house, get it or his space and get it, you know, he'd work on it a little bit. Then I bring it back and kind of right into the mix. Cause once the mix starts to happen. You start to hear these elements come out and be like, oh, like I should have embellished on that part or like that should actually be changed. So, you know, I like it to be back and forth. So the idea was to get it so that this space, he could just come over and do it here and I wouldn't have to move anything. And, and, uh, and then I could keep working on it. So it's, it's been really, uh, it's been it made the process a lot smoother. Wow. That's incredible. I love that story. Cause you know, <laughs> the, the collaborative thing is so it, it, it can be, brought in on so many different levels and to see it on the on the mix side and bringing it in working on it and he's been working now on reaper as well yeah yeah i've been able so we've been testing because you know with covid uh we've been kind of testing out this new workflow where i send him pretty distilled projects like it's not everything i you know i i flatten all the any soft synths and stuff like that but you know we have a set of plugins that we we both have that we both know we have so we can open it on both machines it's actually been cool because it forces you to commit on some level and, and like, think about what you want the song to be. And, you know, if you really need to, you could go pull the original up and, and tweak it, but it's been a, it's been a cool um, kind of learning process of, of like, how is, you know, how you can like just focus and commit and, and what comes out of that process. Cause I think when things are a little too open-ended and you have too many options that can become kind of like, you know, a, a little bit, you know, you, you kind of can, you can lose focus on the, on the, the big picture. Right. So you mentioned Count and Eric from our office is saying that he had met Count at some some of the trade shows in the past. And uh, oh, cool. yeah, a Genelec user himself. And you're and you're a Genelec user as well. Can you tell us your history with Genelec? Yeah. So I was um, I mean, you know, I was I was limited by budget early in my career. So I've gone through a bunch of different um, kinds of speakers. But um, I uh, I the drummer that I work with, Rory O'Connor, um, he goes by Night Moves, uh, is, that's his music project. Yeah. But he he sold me a set of the little ones, you know, like the, I don't remember the, the exact model number. I always get confused about no, them. We all but do. I, I had, yeah, I had little <laughs> ones of those in a sub for uh, ever since like 2014 or 13, I think is when maybe it was I the got those. Pens, the real little ones, like the no, they're in the middle, they're kind of like this. 80, I don't 30. know if that means anything, but yeah, it's not the super tiny ones. 10, 20, so 30, 30 somewhere those. there, yeah, yeah, 30 sounds right, but okay. um, yeah, so anyways, I had those like got those in 2013, and it was just like night and day over what I was using before, but I didn't have a proper room, so when um, 
And then Count had, um, he has like externally amplified ones. I don't remember the model numbers, but he, I know they have an amplifier like outside um, and they're really crisp and sharp uh, and like super um, detailed. And so like, I wanted something closer to that because I, I had, the ones I had were close, but not quite like his. And then um, I was talking to somebody from, I think, um, uh, cutting edge audio here. And they, they turned me on to these, the ones when they came out. And since we were already doing all this stuff, I was like, maybe it's time to upgrade. And I got these and it was just like, okay, these are, these are perfect. Cause yeah. they like, they live between, I wish I knew the model number of his, but they were, they're like square. They're big. But they live, yeah. they live somewhere between those. They're less, they're a little more forgiving, but when it comes time to mix, comes time to mix, you want that. So it's nice to have both rooms. Of course. Yeah. And so you also have the sub, we can see it down there. So you've got the whole thing and yeah. you're using the uh, calibration software and set up that all up, the GLM. Yeah, yeah. The GLM is amazing. Cause like, and then the other, you know, like I use that calibration and that, that's really, um, that's been really useful. And, and um, I think the, like, just the whole ecosystem of the thing and being able to use AES and, uh, and not relying on any of my converters, uh, you know, the, all the conversion gets done in the, the speakers. So I, I think like, Having that and the room EQ and all that stuff has just been a huge kind of game changer as far as like, you know, creating a, a really basically studio or, you know, mastering studio level monitoring environment where that I can actually write in, you know, has, has been, that's been huge. Yeah. And it's important for you also to have the subwoofer because of the music does go down to these lower extensions. And I think it's also, it's important that you can uh, calibrate the whole system a lot of times the subwoofer is the hardest thing to get to really dial in to the whole uh, playback. But the GLM definitely makes that easier. Have you found that to be like a really nice, solid, full range working system for you? Yeah, and it's interesting. It, it like, you know, Count always helps me with subwoofer placement. He's really good at understanding low end and like sub frequencies um, and like where, you know, monitor placement. And he's just good at, at listening to references and being like, oh, like this doesn't sound right basically. And I'll just be like, sounds like an 808, whatever. And he'll be like, oh no, like we need to put the sub behind you or we need to put it in the corner. But I noticed after we got the GLM and did the like the phase thing and and, and did the, uh, the cal calibration, it, it kind of didn't matter as much. I could kind of put it wherever I wanted. And it it actually, that was the problem is like, you know, he would be like, it needs to be in that corner. And it's like, well, that's where like my sense are, you know, it, it would yeah. like cause problems with the layout of the room. And so it's given me a lot more freedom in that respect. Although I still haven't figured out the new space where, where it's going to go, but I, this is just kind of like temporary. I'm thinking it'll probably end up uh, in the back right corner, hey, which is usually what, what I do. For visual for us right now, it looks great. It's in the best location. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. I'm just trying to make the cabling as easy as possible for now, just for, to, to mock it up uh, until I, I really dial it in. Yeah, I love the space. It looks great. Um, and okay. uh, so, so what are you doing these days? What's new for you for 2021? Just working on uh, a new record. Um, yeah, just trying to like kind of figure out what the next Sonic space is, and it's it's uh, that's been a, a fun journey over the last year. And then just working on some collaborations and and uh, and kind of like live streams. Still, you know, been enjoying the process of being able to kind of develop the live show here and in this space and actually broadcast from here. So that that's, that's kind of been fun. So yeah, just same old stuff, just tinkering, but it, it's been nice because there's like no time limited on it. On yeah. it. You can just kind of hang out and do whatever you want. And get it the way you want it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely look forward to the new, new projects that you've got working on and really appreciate having you on our show. Really. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.